Evening folks, tonight we're going to discuss the curfew a little bit further. If you watched my last video, you know that the media has been uh, purporting that the curfew continues at midnight throughout the county, although it was lifted by the courts on December 27th. And with the expiration of the temporary injunction, well, the county has now applied for another temporary injunction and received it. So now the curfew on businesses is back in effect for another 90 days. I had also mentioned that the curfew order from the city was unenforceable because the mayor can't issue that order according to the city charter. The city manager has to, and the city manager's position has been vacant. Well, one of the things they did at this emergency meeting that the city commission held unannounced yesterday was that they made the mayor interim city manager. This is a violation of the city charter and a total conflict of interest because it makes the lawmakers also the law enforcer. It's a total coup d'etat. The commission also instituted an ordinance with the new 8 p.m. curfew, which also includes closure of the causeways coming to the beach. And those causeways are all federal interstate highways or state roads. I don't know what makes them think that they have the authority to close them and why the state hasn't stepped in to stop them. Now what you're looking at is an article that appeared on the Channel 10 website yesterday. And the most unruly thing about these crowds is the fact that they walk around the streets all day and all night without spending any money in the restaurants and bars, mostly because they're college kids and don't have any. Now the city curfew applies to people being in public as well, and that was struck by the courts as unconstitutional. Not the city's ban, but the county's ban on it. If the county can't violate your right to liberty, I don't know why the city thinks they can. Now this 8 p.m. curfew only applies to a four, uh, 11 by four block area. And what it's gonna serve to do is to drive the crowds into the other areas of the city so that the business owners there start complaining about the same thing. And it says on Saturday, police fired pepper balls into a crowd of people determined to stay, ignoring the city's state of emergency to impose the curfew. Well, most of them hadn't heard about the curfew because it was only four hours after they uh, instituted it when it went into effect. And the pepper balls were completely uncalled for. What happened was some guy set up a boombox in the middle of Ocean Drive, which was closed to traffic already anyway. And 50 to 75 people were dancing and twerking to the music. Now the outside patio at the eatery that got damaged was a result of the stampede created when the police fired the pepper balls. The police making 1,000 arrests in the last month, it's not such a big deal, that's 35 a day. They average 45 to 50 a day during normal times. Now when I say normal times, I meant before COVID. Since COVID, the numbers have dropped tremendously in arrests. There's something there that says they confiscated eight guns over the weekend. Six of them were permitted. The other two were in possession of the people who had the crystal meth. So basically they made one bust for illegal weapons with drugs. Now if you look at what the mayor said here, I mean, why do they have to control the streets? The U.S. Constitution says that they shouldn't be able to control the streets. Most of the people they're arresting are arresting for exercising constitutional rights and behaving exactly as they would on the weekend at home. And here they're addressing the causeway closures and they're saying an area residents were calling them angry after they were caught in the causeway closures and stuck in traffic for four hours on Saturday night. And the way I see it, what they're doing is akin to a cop blocking a one-lane road with a traffic stop to write somebody a speeding ticket and then a bunch more cops coming in behind him and writing tickets to everybody who's excessively honking their horns because they want to get through the road that the cop has blocked. Only when they close an entire causeway, it's on a much larger scale because the causeways are the only ways in and out of our island city. Now this is the city's official press release on the matter and how they're going to do it. At least they made an exception for essential businesses and services, which the county curfew doesn't. They forgot to include gas stations. So I don't know how the people making deliveries from the restaurants are going to get gas for their cars to make the deliveries. And if the curfew is not until 8 o'clock, why are they making the sidewalk cafe stop serving at 7? But as has become the usual with the city government, the police are not going to enforce anything in most cases. Now I put this together on Monday, the 22nd, and what you're going to see in the rest of this video is footage I shot after the curfew, or supposed curfew. Now the timing of this is all kind of strange because uh, 48 hours after I published the video explaining why the county curfew was no longer in effect despite what the media was telling you it was, the county goes back to court and gets it put back in effect and the city decides to pass their own more restrictive one. Makes me wonder if the people in the county and city government are watching my videos.
Okay, 8.13 p.m. We're in South Beach. This is uh, La Paralada Liberty. You notice all the people still eating inside there. Although they have taken their sidewalk tables in. This is holy guacamole. There are people still sitting and eating at the sidewalk tables. There's still a line to get tacos inside the store. We have Pizza Fiore here, which still has a line to get pizza, and all our sidewalk tables occupied. That's Harrods Bar across the street. They're still serving. They were supposed to have had everybody out by 8 o'clock. Burger Fi, still got people in there. Oh, I have to zoom that again so you can see it. Burger Fi, still got people in there. Peppers, still got people inside. Burger Fi hasn't taken in their sidewalk tables yet either. Streets are still pretty busy. And I haven't seen a cop. A couple of minutes before, a couple of minutes after curfew. Normally they would be riding around with the lights on and the speaker announcing, oh, there's a curfew, you can be arrested for being in the street. You know, go to your hotel, disperse. I haven't seen a cop. Okay, it's 9.35 p.m. now. And there's still people eating inside Parallel of Liberty. And Pizza Fiori is still serving. They got their sidewalk tables out. Doors still open. It's now a couple of minutes before 1 a.m. Paralada closed around midnight. Pizza Fiori did what they always do. They stopped serving and locked the door at midnight, but if you call them, they'll still hand you a to-go order through the door until about 2, 2.30. Everybody's acting like the eight o'clock curfew doesn't exist. And I haven't seen a cop. They're not riding around with the lights on and they're not announcing the curfew. They're not, uh, there goes another Polaris. Blasting. I don't know if that was a rental or if that was a G Force or a cop. Couldn't see who was driving it. Anyway, Harrods Bar kept serving till midnight. There's a sports bar uh, in Espinola Way called Lost Weekend. They were open till midnight. I was in there myself at 10 30. Quarter to 11. Burger Fi stayed open till midnight. Pepper stayed open till midnight. The cops obviously aren't enforcing the 8 o'clock curfew. And of course, as soon as I start filming, I get the vehicle parking with the copyrighted music, so I'm going to cut this off. Remember to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification. And I'll see you on the next one. This is Miami Beach Audits. I'm out.